Hey guys, Zach Castagoon here, and this week I tried Slap Chop, or more so if and how enamels could be incorporated into the Slap Chop technique. So in this video, I will show you how I went about experimenting with it, all the various models I tested it on, and how I came to the conclusion that what I'll call Goon Slap could be far simpler. As a note, all of the models in this video were painted in the most simple fashion that I could come up with. This includes painting all of the details on the miniature and giving the miniature a value or a shade. No amount of extra time was invested save for a little bit of rust just because I couldn't help myself. I simply wanted to see how fast I could get a model battle ready and if my process or goon slap was indeed faster than slap chop. To be honest, I've never tried slap chop before and I own exactly zero, well, maybe one contrast paint and no speed paints or anything like that. So I had to take a trip to the hobby store and grab all this stuff. Now, if I'm correct, the process behind Slap Chop in its most simple form entails a black primer, a gray dry brush pass, a white dry brush pass for the setup, and then the application of contrast paints to finish. I tried this approach on a few very simple ghoul miniatures and it is indeed very quick and easy to do. The only issue I really had was with the multiple passes of dry brushing that was used to set up the value sketch. It seems to me that the entire aim of Slap Chop is to utilize the translucency of contrast paints to circumnavigate the need for the washing and layering application that is industry standard by working over appreciated miniature. And this is something I also expressed concern about in my last tabletop standard video. The Citadel painting system with the whole base to wash to layer one to layer two nonsense is just far too complicated for battle ready miniatures or even a general painting approach. And as I mentioned in that video, two of those steps can and should be completely disregarded, especially if you're using oils or enamel and the reductive technique. Now, judging by the comments in my last video, the tabletop standard video that I did last week, I understand that there is some concern about using enamels due to the toxicity and smell. This is due to them being solvent-based instead of water-based like acrylic. So let me just say that Villainy inks are far less toxic than other enamels currently available. This is because the type and quality of the base and thinner that is used in the making of them. The base that is used in Villainy inks or the component that suspends the pigment in liquid is 100% non-toxic. The pigments of course are your typical high quality artist grade pigments and the matting agent that I use is food grade so it's completely safe. And that just leaves the solvent or the thinner which is usually the most toxic part of enamel washes. For this, we use the best quality odorless solvent on the market today. Now, most solvents available to artists are unfortunately produced for the industrial paint industry where solvent strength and low cost take priority over safety. While the solvent in Vilni Inc. is a petroleum distillate, all the harmful aromatic solvents have been refined out of it, and less than 0.005% remains, making it the safest and least toxic solvent on the market. Folks, I assure you that I have taken every step that I can to make sure that Vilni Inc. is the safest solvent based hobby paint in the industry. I myself have a beautiful family that needs me to be safe and healthy, and that is something I considered when deciding on the quality and hazard ratings of the materials that went into these enamels. Now, with that said, let me give you another quick update on the Villainy Inc. shipping status. Now, I've recently spoken with a company that is preparing the SDS that will allow us to begin shipping. They have informed me that the EU and UK SDS will be finished in just a few short days and the North American and Australian SDS will be finished in five to 10 business days. So UK and EU orders will begin shipping a few days earlier than the NA and Australian orders. We're almost there guys. I am super hyped and I greatly appreciate all the support from the community. 
As far as distribution goes, PK Pro told me they were getting absolutely overwhelmed by requests for the products. Felix's exact words were, it's getting insane over here. So I definitely appreciate the interest you guys are generating. Global distribution will be a key part to Villainy Inc.'s long-term success. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate it so much. Alrighty guys, so let's get into this video and take a closer look at this goon slap method. As I stated earlier, it seems that the idea behind Slap Chop is to circumnavigate fiddly applications that have too many steps. These less than ideal application processes are, in my opinion, entirely due to acrylic washes, their lack of flexibility, and the lack of community knowledge about enamel washes and the reductive technique. Since Goon Slap will utilize enamels and the reductive technique, this will allow us to trim off the need for the value sketch that is used to set up Slap Chop. So with Goon Slap, after a white primer, all we need to do is base color and wash the miniature. Since Villainy inks are solvent based, we can then use a spirit and a Q-tip or brush to reduce the wash back off, leaving the base colors properly shaded. The best part about this is that since we don't need to rely on transparent contrast paints to get the job done, we can go back to using any type of acrylic paint for our base colors. You know, that giant collection of paint most hobbyists have that costs hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Now, let's take a look at Goon Slap from start to finish over a Chaos Space Marine. We'll start the process off with a nice layer of Stino Res white primer, or any white primer that you prefer. The reason we want a solid white primer is to allow for maximum color reflection in our base colors. Of course, base colors will appear brighter over white primer, and since enamel unifying washes like the one we're about to use will take down the overall brightness of our base color by roughly 10 to 15%, we want to make sure our base colors are pretty bright to start with so the final result doesn't end up too dark. For base coloring on this model, I applied Blood Angel's Contrast from Citadel via an airbrush to the entire miniature in two coats. Of course, you can apply this with a brush for a similar, albeit slower, result. After that, I'll apply the rest of the base colors as prescribed by the box art for the miniature. So any black can be used for the pipes, parts of the backpack, the various legs and arm joints, and parts of the axe. Light bronze from Pro Acryl will be used to do all the tedious trim work and Pro Acryl silver for the chains and a few other details. Stalin Res Grey Primer on the handle of the axe and finally Pro Acryl's olive flesh on the skulls. So as you can see the base color method used here was pretty standard using mostly standard acrylics. All that is left now is to add and remove the enamel wash, in this case I'll use Goons Grime which is the most well-rounded wash for unifying wash and works really well with most base colors. The application of unifying washes can be applied with either an airbrush or just a brush. In either case, the idea behind Goon Slap is to just slap the wash on quickly. Of course, you can always handle this application more carefully, but for the sake of finishing a miniature quickly, I'll just demonstrate a standard application. Next up, I will hit the wash with a blow dryer just long enough to flash off the solvent and then come in with my mineral spirits and clean the miniature off. To clean up enamels, usually a dampened Q-tip used in a dabbing method will give the best results. Once we're done here, hit it again with a blow dryer, give it a look, and clean up any areas that need just a little bit more cleaning. And that's it. So prime, base color, wash, finished. And it's really just that simple, guys. I mean, it's very straightforward. No need to do any multiple layers of dry brushing or anything like that. Just base the miniature out, wash it with an enamel, and remove it back off. You know, the reason this probably isn't as widespread and popular as it could be is just because people aren't very familiar with using oils and enamels. It kind of has this mysticism behind it. So. You know, that's what I'm trying to do with Vilni Inc. is get more people accustomed to using enamel washes and the reductive technique. It'll really change the way that you paint miniatures, I promise. Alright, so before I go guys, I want to show a little bit more footage of me painting 
with the goon slap technique using contrast paints. So these miniatures were primed white, painted with contrast paints, either with a brush or applied with an airbrush, and then the goon's grime was applied and then removed. So looks pretty good, uh, pretty simple stuff. Very easy to knock out a bunch of miniatures like this. And they have a little bit darker of an aesthetic too. So you know me, I like grim dark stuff. So my miniatures are going to always look a little bit darker than your bright, colorful, run-of-the-mill miniatures. And I should note too that this technique is pretty much how I start off every single paint job. I mean, usually I'm basing out either parts of the miniature or the entire miniature giving it this unifying wash and you can always just stop there but for my more detailed miniatures things that i take farther i mean this is always the first step so you can start with this and then take it much farther using all the techniques that we teach on the grimdark compendium to make your miniatures look super realistic grimdark Alrighty guys, so that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to check out the Grimdark Compendium. Head over to the Villainy Inc. page, pick those up. We'll be shipping those out soon. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll catch you in the next.